tonight into memory. Our community and the nation grieving. After the passing of former President George H.W. Bush, preparations underway for his burial at the Bush Library, now a place of mourning. This special edition of KAG's News starts now. Good evening, I'm Jay O'Brien. Welcome to this special edition of KAG's News reporting live from the Bush Library here in College Station on the campus of Texas A&M. This space has become something of a makeshift memorial after the news that President Bush passed away last night at the age of 94, the longest living U.S. president at the time of his death, and a gentleman who had seen the better part of a century and played an active role in it. On the grounds of this library tonight, visitors from out of town, as you would expect in a time of mourning. We met a gentleman who drove all the way from Houston and other people who had family in the area who decided to make a last minute trip to the library this evening. But the throngs of people, the majority of those here today, were from Aggie Land and College Station. President Bush was, of course, considered an honorary Aggie, having put his library here on the grounds of Texas A&M because he enjoyed the spirit of the school and the character of the school, as he described. He will be buried behind the library come Thursday, we're learning today, in a grave site that includes his wife, Barbara, who passed away earlier this year, and their daughter, Robin, who died in childhood of leukemia. Now, of course, Casey Bowen is at the library with us tonight to discuss uh, or, or to talk to some mourners. Let's turn it over to her now. Casey, good evening. George H.W. Bush, they came here to the George Bush Presidential Library at Texas A&M to honor and respect the former president. They came out and they specifically came out to the statue right behind me of former President Bush. They laid flowers and candles and notes to leave their condolences. And I got to talk to a lot of the people who came out here this afternoon. And one man told me that he had a special connection with former President Bush. Notes, candles and flowers all lay by the feet of former President George H.W. Bush. We decided to come over and pay our respects as best we could. Dozens coming out to the George Bush Presidential Library, offering their condolences to the 41st president. Well, it shows he's a well-respected man. Among those is Lee Goodell. Just him knowing that he was my commander-in-chief and the type of man that he was and the type of leader that he was, it just uh, it, it tugs at your heartstrings. Goodell served under President Bush while in the Army. He was a down-to-earth person um, of strong virtues, good moral character. And believes now Bush is joining those he loves. It's time for him to go be with his wife, to be with her firstborn daughter who died when she was little. And is looking back on a life well lived. It's more of a reflection and thinking back about the good things that happened. And Goodell served in the Army when President Bush was commander in chief, and he told me he was actually there and he heard President Bush give up, give the speech of Operation Desert Storm. And he said that was something that he will always remember. And now President Bush will be laid to rest here in College Station on Thursday. He'll be laid next to his wife, Barbara, and his daughter, Robin, here at the George Bush Presidential Library. There's a special cemetery on the grounds, kind of further back in a private cemetery here at the George Bush Presidential Library. Live in College Station, Casey Bowen. Jay, back to you. Casey Bowen, thank you very much. We should note that Casey, uh, I'm not sure if she mentioned it, but we shall note again that there is a memorial planned for behind the library at 8 p.m. this evening. Since the news of his death at age 94, there's been an outpouring of emotion with people paying their last respects to the former president. Although he wasn't from College Station, as we said, he was an Aggie, but he was also a resident of Houston. There were outpourings of memorials at his Houston home in a neighborhood there in Houston. And today, uh, the gate that marks the line of demarcation into that home was covered with memorials. It was said that President Bush passed away in his home, in that home in Houston last night. But to Maine now we go, where the president has also had an impact. They had a home in Kennebunkport, Maine, along the Maine coast. Very important to the Bush family, that compound in Kennebunkport. It's where the former president would summer. It's also where he would hold meetings for the staff of this library, the Bush 
Cash Library. In addition to hosting dignitaries and family members, it's also where he announced the appointment of Clarence Thomas to the United States Supreme Court. Kennebunkport, Maine, a very famous and, and uh, uh, um, treasured location for the Bush family. Visitors brave the cold there in Kennebunkport today to place memorials along the edge of that property. President Bush has lived such a, a, a jam-packed life. It was one of the lives that people described as a life well lived. We have a tribute to that life planned for you this evening. Here is that report. For the better part of a century, George Herbert Walker Bush lived his life in the service of others, devoted to his country, his community, and his family. Born in 1924 to a U.S. Senator and a mother who taught him humility, Bush was a witness to and a member of one of our nation's greatest generations. At the age of 18, he went from prep school to war. A naval aviator flying 58 combat missions, Bush was shot down over the Japanese island of Chichijima in 1944. I knew the fleet was going south, so I knew if I wasn't rescued, I would be uh, captured. And it was... It was a harrowing experience. Bailing out over the ocean, two crew members dead, Bush was rescued in the nick of time by a passing submarine. The young man would go home to marry Barbara Pierce, whom he met at a dance and called the love of his life. The new family went to Yale and then to the West Texas oil business. They had six children, George W., Jeb, Neil, Marvin, Dorothy, and a daughter Robin, who died of leukemia at age three. Bush would soon turn from oil to politics, beginning as chair of the Harris County Republican Party and then an unsuccessful run for the U.S. Senate. In 1966, he ran for Congress and won. A rising Republican star from the then blue state of Texas, soon Bush was appointed ambassador to the United Nations by President Nixon and then chairman of the Republican Party during the Watergate scandal. He'd go on to lead the U.S. delegation to China, the CIA, and in 1980, run for president, only to come up short against Ronald Reagan. The Vice President of the United States. He served eight years as Reagan's Vice President, winning the presidency himself in 1988. His tenure would be dictated by international affairs, the collapse of the Soviet Union, military operations against Panamanian dictator Manuel Noriega, and a successful full-scale military conflict in the Gulf to drive Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait. Iraq must comply fully with all relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions. Operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Back home, he signed the Americans with Disabilities Act, the American Literacy Act, added to the Clean Air Act and made two appointments to the Supreme Court. By serving some higher purpose than ourselves, a shining purpose, the illumination of a thousand points of light. Bush would only serve one term in office, however, beaten by Bill Clinton. He spent his post-presidency with his wife Barbara, his rock, and a love story for the ages. She passed away in 2018. George and Barbara Bush would spend much of their time here in College Station at the Bush Library, meeting with students and walking their dogs around the library's pond. He had unmatched manners, often writing handwritten letters of congratulations, thanks, or hello. He watched his son, George W. Bush, ascend to the White House, only the second president in American history to raise a fellow president. Kind and humble his entire life, Bush didn't talk about himself much. He liked to serve on the national stage to the classroom. And that is just what he did. A remembrance of a life well lived there. That life will be honored this coming week. It begins on Monday where President Bush will lie in state in the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol, as is customary for U.S. presidents who have passed away. President Trump announced today that Wednesday of this coming week will be a national day of mourning and a state funeral at the National Cathedral in Washington. A non-denominational cathedral will be attended by dignitaries, former presidents alike, and President 
President Trump announced that he will be in attendance there as well. Onwards to Thursday, which is where the Bryan College Station community begins to play its role in all of this. The train will, uh, the president will be loaded onto a train. His casket will be from Houston. It will travel through Navasota all the way here to Bryan College Station. We're being told it will stop somewhere along George Bush Drive right outside of the library. And then the president will be brought here to the Bush Library where he will be buried in a back garden behind the library's iconic lake next to, as we've been telling you over the course of this evening, his wife Barbara and his daughter Robin. We have a lot more coverage tonight from the Bush Library on this special edition of KAG's News. We'll see you right back here in a few minutes. Good evening. Welcome back to this special edition of KX News on this Saturday night. As we honor the life of former President George H.W. Bush, who was pronounced dead last night. Condolences have been pouring in not only here to College Station, but to the Bush family from across the world. Former presidents, in fact, as you would imagine, have offered their condolences to the Bush family. Here are a few of those messages. It's been called the most exclusive club in the world. A cadre of former commanders in chief reminiscing on shared White House experiences and coming together for good causes. All were here a year ago for the One America Appeal concert. Hi to Texas. George Herbert Walker Bush was the group's de facto patriarch, the father of one former president, a father figure, according to his wife, to another. George W. Bush, only the second son in American history to follow in a father's Oval Office footsteps, issued this statement last night, saying his father was, quote, a man of the highest character and the best dad a son or daughter could ask for. For President Clinton, the man who kept Bush from a second term but would later become a best friend, the statement, I quote, will always hold our friendship as one of my life's greatest gifts. He would forge close relationships with former presidents Carter and Obama as well, visiting with President Obama in Houston just last week. President Obama and his wife Michelle last night, quote, our hearts are heavy and they are, quote, filled with gratitude. There is a lot more for us at the Bush Library this evening in the special edition of KX News. We leave you for the moment with these messages of condolence to the Bush family. Welcome back to this special edition of KAG's News. Our community grieved in a similar way earlier this year when we learned of the passing of Barbara Bush, President Bush's longtime wife and called the love of his life. Here's a look back at their love story for the ages. It's a love story more than seven decades in the making. A love story first found in letters from World War II and not too long ago, still on display on a kiss cam at a Texans football game in Houston. They were two young kids in 1941. He was 17, she was 16 when they met at a school dance. A year and a half later, they were engaged. He was on his way to becoming the youngest pilot in the Navy. Their long distance relationship revealed in letters. She called him Poppy, he called her Bar. I love you precious with all my heart, he wrote. And to know that you love me means my life. How often I've thought about the immeasurable joy that will be ours someday. But of the war, he said, it is frightening. At times, the seriousness of this is beginning to strike home. And to Poppy, she wrote back, I really am excited but scared to death too. If you hear a big noise up there, don't worry. It's just my knees knocking. But it's a love story that nearly ended before it had a chance to start. A year later, he was shot down near the Japanese island of Chichijima. He was rescued by a passing submarine, but his two crewmen died. And the rest of the letters he carried from Bar were lost at sea, too. They married in 1945. They had six children, including a future president and a little girl named Robin, who died of leukemia at the age of four. There would be dozens of different homes as Mr. Bush chased their fortunes in the Texas oil business, then the political career that took him from Congress to the U.N. to the CIA and to the White House, where the love story obviously endured.
I've loved George Bush almost since the day I laid eyes on him. In the health scares they both shared in these final years, they even spent time being treated in the same Houston hospital together. But back in 2009, Mrs. Bush needed a new heart valve. The operation then was a success, but it was a husband's heart that was open and on display. And it went so well, and I've been a nervous wreck about it. I think there's a lot of interest because of who she is. A dream and a marriage enduring for 73 years. Welcome back. Members of the Bush family will be here in College Station on Thursday, a tight knit group of which President Bush was the patriarch. Take a look. When George Herbert Walker Bush was born in 1924, the family finances and political stage appeared set for him. His father, Prescott Bush, a Yale graduate, railroad executive, Wall Street banker and U.S. Senator from Connecticut, had the cash and connections of the privileged. But Bush's life would be guided by the modesty taught by his mother, Dorothy, and his journey uniquely his own. Six months after Pearl Harbor on his 18th birthday, Bush volunteered to fight in World War II. He became the youngest pilot to fly in the Navy. On a bombing run in the South Pacific, Japanese fire hit Bush's torpedo bomber, and he and the other two crew members bailed out. Only Bush survived, picked up by an American sub. He came home to marry his sweetheart, Barbara Pierce. He went on to Yale, and then they set out to find their own fortune in the oil fields of West Texas. But family tragedy found them, too. After the birth of their first son, George W., daughter Robin came along. But the girl became ill near her third birthday and died from leukemia in late 1953. The Bushes then moved to Houston in 1959, and he jumped into politics. George Bush, the happy family man, is now George Bush, Republican candidate for the United States Senate. Bush never reached the Senate despite two tries, but Houston voters did elect him to the House. He later took appointments in the 1970s as U.N. ambassador and CIA director, then elected vice president and president. We are Americans, part of something larger than ourselves. But for all his success, Bush often gave credit to his mother, Dorothy Walker Bush, for having the biggest impact on his life, the devoutly religious matriarch who drilled humility into her sons. Bush's life was not defined by the political system he navigated. His daughter, Dora Bush, wrote, but by the set of beliefs his mother taught him. By his remarkable life of accomplishment and civility, his mother taught him well. That was Shelley Slater reporting. We'll be right back. That's been our special report from the Bush Library on this Saturday night. We'll see you right back here this week for other editions of KAGS News.